there. The mics. The microphones are live. The Good evening, everyone. Please join us in a salute to the flag. Welcome back to our main meeting room. I'm so happy to be back here. Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, this is to state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building, by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2013 to the news record in Star Ledger in December 2012, and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Mr. Brownlee? Here. Mr. Larrier? Here. Mr. Leventhal? Here. Mr. Ryan? Here. Mayor DeLuca? Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws of 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires all means of public bodies be open to the public, whereas Section 7 provides that the governing body has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act of participation in the public at any meeting, and whereas it is our this governing body to comply with the provision of this act, same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Township Committee. Township of Maplewood does hereby prohibit, except to set forth in a formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, and except as otherwise prescribed by law, does limit the public to the observations of the actions and discussions of the governing body at all of its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 1st, 2013 Maplewood Township Committee meeting. This government is still open. <laughs> um, our meeting tonight is uh, a lot of different things on our agenda. We have two proclamations, one for Fire Prevention Week and our Public Safety Committee Chair, Mr. Brownlee, will be issuing that. The other is a proclamation for a week of respect. And earlier tonight, Deputy Mayor Leventhal was at an event for Garden State Equality in which she read that, and uh, she'll read that again this evening here. We have a presentation from our surrogate, the Essex County surrogate, uh, Theodore Stevens. He'll give us his annual update. We'll have our public comment period. Um, and then after that, num item number nine, we'll have a hearing to terminate the redevelopment agreement and designation of Davies 14 LLC as redeveloper of 1611 Springfield Avenue. Um, we'll have our monthly Board of Health meeting. We have uh, two ordinances on final passage, one to uh, make some changes with the licensing of dogs and cats and the other to reduce the speed limit on Valley Street from 35 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. With both of those, we will have a public hearing uh, when I, after we read the ordinance, we'll invite you up if you'd like to say anything on those specific ordinances. Then we are introducing five, six new ordinances. Um, one is to increase the jitney fees for 2014 by $7. Another is to eliminate the sunset provision for the Springfield Avenue Improvement District, Special Improvement District. Third is to uh, change the, uh, the um, time to start construction on weekends on Saturdays uh, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and to add 11 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, next we have um, Canceling $898,000 in bonds. Uh, and then we have, my goodness, um, we have some fee changes in the engineering department and we have a stop sign ordinance on Essex Avenue and South 4th Street. We then have four discussion items, one uh, 60 Woodland Road. Um, we're going to continue our discussion of residential fences. Residential fences. Uh, four feet versus six feet. Rental registration, um, we have a draft ordinance we'll be looking at. We'll be talking about the post office lease extension. 
And after that, we have our consent agenda in which we're going to be uh, canceling a few uh, grant balances, uh, authorizing the payment of bills and vouchers, um, closing a contract for the generator installation here, or, or awarding professional services, environmental services, and then approving the minutes of September 7th. So that's our meeting tonight. And we're going to start off with uh, Mr. Brownlee reading the Fire Prevention Week proclamation. We have a representation from the fire department. It gives me, uh, as chair of the Public Safety Committee, it gives me great pleasure to read this proclamation on behalf of our mayor, Victor Luca, um, meeting with the police, uh, police and fire chiefs every month realize the hard work that these gentlemen do, gentlemen and ladies, right? And um, uh, it's, it's apropos that uh, from time to time, although they do the job just because, you know, they know it's the right thing to do, it's, it's imperative that we recognize from time to time the work that they do. Proclamation, Fire Prevention Week, October 6th to 12th, 2013. Whereas, the history of Fire Prevention Week has its roots in the Great Chicago Fire, which began on October 8, 1871, lasted 27 hours, and incurred the most damage the following day. And whereas, in the end, the Great Chicago Fire killed more than 250 people, left 100,000 homeless, destroyed more than 17,400 structures, and burned more than 2,000 acres, and whereas fire departments respond to a fire somewhere in the United States every 18 seconds, battling more than 1.7 million fires, three quarters of structure fires are residential. And whereas in the United States, 95% of home fires have at least one smoke alarm, yet half of the home fire deaths occur in the 5% of homes without smoke alarms. And whereas smoke alarms are the most effective early warning devices available and residents are encouraged to change the batteries in their smoke detectors and carbon monoxide alarms when they change their clocks with the end of daylight savings time and should be tested every month to ensure they are operational. And whereas the theme of Fire Prevention Week 2013 is prevent kitchen fires, now therefore, I, Victor DeLuca, Mayor of the Township of Maplewood, on behalf of the Township Committee, do proclaim the week of October 6 to 12, 2013, as Fire Prevention Week in the Township of Maplewood, and call upon all residents of the Township to participate in fire prevention activities at home, work, school, and especially encourage all residents to install both smoke detectors and carbon monoxide alarms in their homes. I'll be very brief, but uh, one overlooked fact of the day of the Chicago fire that there was uh, one of the greatest losses of life in this country to a natural disaster in Peshtigo, Wisconsin, where uh, in and around the city of Peshtigo, uh, between 1,500 and 2,000 residents were killed. And that wasn't as much of a news story at the time because it was more of a remote region. It was 250 miles north of Chicago. Uh, it burnt 1.5 million acres as well. That's um, a sobering fact. What we enjoy the most as firefighters during that week is getting out to each and every uh, student in Maplewood, in the grammar schools, in the elementary schools, and it's rewarding to see how much we affect those young kids from kindergarten on. And as you move up through their, their years in school, they remember more and more of what we tell them the previous year. And that's very rewarding to us. And we have had kids that we've met 10 years after the fact say, you're the, you're the fireman that came to my school. So it, it really, the proof is in the numbers too. Fire deaths are dropping in the United States, but as a, the most developed country in the world, it's still, it's still uh, horrible 
to think of how many people still perish in residential fires every year. And can't stress enough uh, what Mr. Brownlee said about smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. Of the serious fires I've been to in Maplewood where there's been some deaths and bad injuries, there were not working smoke detectors in the home. And it's a very simple, inexpensive uh, preventive that, that we're all obligated to yourselves and to your family to really you know, make sure that they're in functioning order. So I thank you very much for the presentation, the proclamation, and uh, it's a week coming up that we, we truly enjoy because we get to get out amongst the children in the town and they, um, you can tell how much that they appreciate it. So hopefully through the years we'll get more safe and more safe. All right, thanks. Thank you, Lieutenant Callahan. Thank you. Our next uh, proclamation is the Week of Respect, and Deputy Mayor Leventhal is going to read that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was over at the uh, Garden State Equality uh, presentation tonight at the Bergdorf. In fact, it's still going on. Um, where I did read the proclamation and spoke along with uh, Assemblywomen uh, Tuttle and our own Myla Jacy, who were uh, both instrumental in the passage of the New Jersey Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights, and it, was, it received unanimous vote uh, three years ago. This is the third week of respect, um, and I will read the proclamation. Whereas New Jersey Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights was enacted into law in 2011 to address bullying in the state with the unanimous vote of the New Jersey General Assembly and the State Senate and the support of Garden State Equality, the Anti-Defamation League of New Jersey and the New Jersey Coalition for Bullying Awareness and Prevention. And whereas the White House estimates that 13 million people are bullied each year, about a third of all students. And whereas bullying means any gesture, written, verbal, or physical act, or electronic, electronic communication that is reasonably perceived as being motivated by an actual or perceived characteristic such as sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, race, color, religion, ancestry, national origin, mental or physical disability, or any other distinguishing characteristic. And whereas Garden State Equality, along with students, teachers, leaders, and community members, will gather this week in Maplewood to bring awareness regarding ways to combat bullying, harassment, and intimidation. And whereas activities this week will increase the public's awareness of this problem and the need to change the climate and culture of bullying that is adversely affecting our youth. Now, therefore, Victor DeLuca, mayor of the Township of Maplewood, does hereby proclaim October 7th to 11th as the Week of Respect and October 1st as Bully-Free New Jersey Day in Maplewood and call upon the residents of the township to stand up against bullying and harassment and to work to build <coughs> Excuse me. Work to build inclusive, safe, safe schools. I had the opportunity to speak with uh, James Clementi, uh, Tyler Clementi's older brother, who, uh, s even with their foundation and all the work that they're doing, talks about the pain that the f their family experiences and his hope that the work of not just their foundation, but Garden State Equality and other groups in terms of anti-bullying will prevent that pain from affecting other, other families. So, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, next up is a presentation from our surrogate, Theodore Stevens. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor DeLuca, members of the, this council, good evening. I, I meant to uh, say hi to all of you earlier, except uh, Councilman Brownlee, good to see you, and uh, Councilman Larrier, nice to see you as well. Uh, it's my pleasure to come to you with the annual surrogates update. The distressing part about that to you may be that you're going to see me annually, so I um, <laughs> apologize for that in advance. But upon uh, running for office um, for the surrogates court, 
Um, I was, had the honor to get around all 22 municipalities and to, to meet a lot of people. And through the course of it, I, the, the memories that stand out first and foremost are the two main questions I was asked. First one being, what the heck is your name again? And the second one being, just what the heck is a surrogate? And no one really knew, or very few people know. And so I, I felt it was incumbent upon me to get around to let people know more of what the surrogate does. And the surrogate is, as some of you know, the only elected judge in the state of New Jersey. Every county has one surrogate, and we handle the probate of will estates, the administration of non-will estates, and also handle the uh, processing of adoption applications and complaints, and also the growing field of guardianship process applications as well. Uh, as you would understand with the graying of America with baby boomers, guardianship applications are increasing dramatically to the point where uh, the Supreme Court um, Chief Justice Rabner has made it a priority that he wants the surrogates to work with the probate courts in order to get a better handle on exactly what, how guardians are handling their ward's affairs for the benefit of those who don't know, that a guardianship, if you haven't gone through one, is a daunting process. And as a way of, since I'm not practicing in that area, I can give away a little free legal advice, that uh, when in doubt, spend the $500 or whatever it's gonna be for that power of attorney, which is a document that handles your affairs or business affairs should someone need it. It can be an immediate one that's present today, or it can be a spring power of attorney to only come into play when it's needed. And the why that's beneficial is because the guardianship complaint, which is after someone becomes incapacitated, they can't give away their power of attorney, it's at least 10 times that much money, being $5,000 or $10,000, to apply for a guardianship. But in addition to that, a guardianship, just like most of the other things that come through the office, is a proceeding, a legal proceeding, a complaint filed, and there's a lot of angst that goes along with it that this power of attorney may be able to avoid. And just like everything else that comes through our office, whether it's an, a, a, a will situation, a non-will, a guardianship, even an adoption, which generally is a very, very joyous occasion in the courtroom. I don't know if any lawyers are here, but it's, I dare say, other than distinguished counsel, of course. Uh, of course, Mr. Desiderio, <coughs> we all know. But other than, I'm sure the council will agree, that an adoption is the only time when everybody in the courtroom is happy, including the judge, <laughs> which very rarely happens. But even in that instance, the anxiousness of clearing that last hurdle is daunting often. So everyone who comes into the circus court is a person who needs some compassion, some understanding, and some assistance in many cases, especially the attorneys. But we won't talk about that. But uh, what we're, I'm happy to report, that uh, the surrogates court is extremely well run. Our staff is very experienced. We have a collective experience of 175 years among the other 12 members of the surrogate staff. In fact, most recently we honored our most senior member, Mrs. Doris Guy, in honor of her 50 years of service to Essex County. So we clearly, she clearly was well <coughs> deserving of that recognition. So upon entering the surrogates court, I wanted to do a couple things so we still can do better. We're doing well, but we can do better. Last year, I was happy to report to the council and to the citizens of Maplewood that we initiated an extended hours program in which on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month, the surrogates court is open an additional two hours till 6.30 in the evening. Between 4.30 and 6.30, uh, in, uh, residents can come in have an appointment to be seen uh, after hours so they don't have to take work, time off of work, which we found to be a very important aspect. We wanted to really address that for the public. And they can be seen, they're in and they're out in a, set, in a very limited period of time. I dare say also, it's one of the rare times you can come to the city of Newark and not have to pay to park because the employee <laughs> lot is open. So there are all kinds of benefits available to you to come in during our after hours program and it has been very well received. This year, I'm happy to announce that we have just launched our new website, which is www.essexsurrogate.com. Very interactive, a 
a lot of information to get people prepared for coming down to the surrogate's court. And we find the attorneys in the area that practice and come in our court, I find it very beneficial because the surrogate's court is one of the few surrogate courts where we allow attorneys to prepare the documents, the applications, before coming to the office. It's a drop-down menu. They can drop down the form, fill it out online there, print it out, and bring it in so that they're, again, saving time from having to do that in the surrogate's court. So we find that very beneficial, and we think it's going to be very helpful for folks. I caution you, though, when you're putting in our, our information, www.essexsurrogate.com, it may lead you to another site, which is adult content only. I have nothing to do with that. It's a total disclaimer. But um, you'll see what I mean. I don't need to go into any further. But give it a try. You'll, you'll, you'll get a laugh out of it. I did. But we find it to be very beneficial, and, and we think that that's also an enhancement to our court. Uh, we're going to continue to try to work on innovations going forward, and we think that uh, pretty much every time I come, I'll be able to tell you about something else we're doing to, um, to expand the emphasis of our office. Any, I'm available. Any questions you any have, questions? Any, Mr. Mayor, or any members of council? I want to thank you for uh, making yourself so visible. I think you're, you could have probably fallen over your predecessor, and no one would have known. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, it's great that you're out here on an annual basis uh, letting people know what your office does and that you're making changes to make it more accessible. So thank you. Oh, I appreciate that, Mr. Mayor. It, with your permission, I'm going to leave some of the flyers and some other little tokens I have with your clerk. And uh, let me just say in closing, though, um, just commemorate uh, a year ago almost uh, to this time, we were all faced with uh, uh, dealing with uh, Sandy and all the ravages that that brought, and uh, hearing you talk about the reopening and being back in, in your chambers, which I'm sure is home for this council, as it is every other council that comes to City Hall. I know this building was a refuge for many of the residents also here. So uh, City Hall is always a very, very special place, and so I'm honored to have an opportunity to come and visit your City Hall. So I appreciate right. your Thank hospitality. You. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, we're now at the point in our agenda where we invite uh, anyone who would like to speak to the Township Committee. You can come on up, give us your name and address, and share the, your thoughts with us. Is there anyone who wants to address the Township Committee? Anything you want. Good evening, Township Committee. Thank you. My name is Candace Davenport, and I live at 477 Richmond Avenue in Maplewood. While I am a public health nurse for the Maplewood Health Department, tonight I'm here on behalf of the Maplewood uh, Gratitude Graffiti Project. This project was started in Maplewood last year um, by myself and another resident, and this year I just wanted to raise the awareness of the Township Committee that we are starting October 20th. And it is um, essentially a practice of 40 days, um, inviting residents to practice daily gratitude by writing on the storefront windows, who, uh, storefronts who volunteer and write, writing down one thing they're grateful for on the storefront window and at the local libraries. Both branches are participating in their own uh, project form. This year, the project has also expanded. <clears throat> Maplewood has inspired three other towns to participate. So um, may, the Gratitude Graffiti Project will be in Teaneck, New Jersey, um, in parts of Princeton, New Jersey, and Highland Park, New Jersey. Whole towns are participating, at least in Teaneck and Highland Park, and we foresee that it's going to grow. In fact, this year in Vancouver, British Columbia, where my partner has now moved, um, they celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving on October 14th, and they are 20 days into it. And it is amazing. And so I'm very proud to say that it started in Maplewood, New Jersey. So um, it's something to be very proud of. And so I want to show everyone what, um, while we were waiting for the Township Committee to start, this is an example of what Gratitude Graffiti Project will look like in town. So you can participate in any one of the storefronts or at the libraries uh, for 40 days until Thanksgiving. And then the whole town-wide community project disappears. So 
it's a very beautiful project that every um, member of the community can participate in. So I thank also the Maplewood Health Department and the Recreation and Cultural Affairs Department who show their support that being healthy can be simple and fun. And I invite the Township Committee to um, participate in the Graduate Graffiti Project this year, um, but also to encourage um, Township employees to give a note of thanks to each other for the great work and service that they do. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also, um, <laughs> we're going to have the Board of Health meeting in a little bit, but I just wanted to thank you for your work with your colleague in doing the Affordable Care Act flyer. Thank you. Uh, it really was, uh, we were taking the leadership there again and getting that information out, so thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Hi, Joe Strupp, 7 Yale Street, and editor of MapleWoody.com. I wanted to publicly thank the township uh, administration, who is constantly responding to my constant requests for information, especially Ms. Fritzen, who puts up with my uh, annoying requests most professionally. Um, one issue that has come up that I did want to ask about is the eight proposals for the post office redevelopment. The full proposals have not been made available to the public. I know the township did release certain pages of each one on the website. Some of them do not go completely through what the proposals include. Some do, saying that there's X number of floors and retail space, etc. Some of them just have the background on the companies. I made a public uh, request, a public, uh, open public records request, and was told it was not uh, public information for certain reasons, which is understandable. But I wonder if there's a way that the township could write up some kind of uh, uh, summary of what each proposal would <coughs> entail so that the public could have a glance at what they will all have before the uh, Township Committee makes any decisions on what will be awarded. So they can get a, a flavor of what each one will be and perhaps comment and, and give their input that way. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to address the Township Committee? Good evening. My name is Julie Martini and I live at 12 Briarcliff Court. I'm glad the last person brought up the post office since I had several questions with regard to not just the post office but the station house. <clears throat> and I typed out my questions because I know I'm going to hit you flat footed and I want to give you some time in which to do some research and answer my questions at a later date, hopefully in two weeks. It seems to me that um, expectations can be set by looking back at the recent past and understanding that so, you know, something's going to happen in the near-term future and let's see how similar or different they are. So my question, my first question is, um, net of expenses and with the last bill paid, how much revenue was actually generated by the sale of the land that's underneath the station house? No? $925,000. $925,000. That's okay. the net. Excuse me? It's the net. It's the net. Um, okay. Do you think that was a good price? I, I mean, was that within your expectations? That's the net. That's not the gross. Okay. All right. Um, I was looking at the assessments, and in 2012, the assessment of, this, of the station house under the ownership of the township um, was broken down as follows, $1,111,400 for the land, $1,751,800 for improvements for a total of $2,827,000. In 2003, under the new ownership, the assessment dropped um, with 1,000, I'm sorry, 1,750,000 1, for the land and $100 for the improvements for a total of $1,750,100. Um, what's the explanation for the 2013 improvement assessment at $100? for a 48-unit apartment building generating over $1,000 in monthly rent. Go ahead. 
because the building didn't come on, <clears throat> the building didn't come online with the certificates of occupancy until 2013. The official assessment won't come on the books till 2014. They'll come on as an added assessment in 2013. The, the project wasn't completed in 2013. The numbers you have are not the right numbers. The numbers, <laughs> the, no, 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 they're no, the right numbers. They're, well, they're the right numbers for, the, for what's for, in the book. For, for right, right now, the, 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 the way the taxing laws work, you can scratch your head, but this is the way the law is, okay? okay. The improvement doesn't come on until the year after all the certificates of occupancy are issued. Okay, so. Each, excuse me, each apartment gets a CFO? Each apartment gets a CO, right? And you wait until all of the apartments? We don't wait. The, the state of New Jersey requires us to wait. Requires We'd like to collect the tax dollars as soon as possible. The state of New <laughs> Jersey requires us to wait until they come on board. So in 2014, if you come here and it's still $100, then I think you'll have a good question. But what happens if all the apartments aren't rented? Not Doesn't rented. Matter. Certificates of occupancy Doesn't are matter. issued. So well, if, the there had been, if there had well, been only five apartments finished, you then there'd what? be... You, you said that we would do some research. We'll give you some research. But I just want to be very clear that the, uh, the numbers you're using are not the numbers that are the numbers there now because the numbers you have are before the certificate of occupancies were issued. Okay. I just got them from the Essex County tax records. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, but then explain to me, so once everything is adjusted, there won't be that decrease in assessment anymore, right? I mean, the decrease in assessment from one year to the next. You know what? We'll have to, dollars. you can ask us, we'll get you back that information. Okay. It, it just seems odd that the state of New Jersey would do that since it's, it, it means a loss of, of revenues for us. You don't know that. Okay, all right, okay. The township is interested in collecting all the tax dollars that are due to the township. Okay, all right. Then I was looking at the post office site and I got some conflicting information according to that same um, Essex County uh, tax records. They list Amy Gleitscher of, List of Livingston as the owner of 156160 Maplewood Avenue. That's okay. correct. And is she the owner? She's the owner of the, she's the, uh, the, the town owns the land. She owns the building until November 9th. Until November 9th. What happens on November 9th? The she lease uses? expires and we get the land back and the building. I'm confused about that. How do you get back the building if the building doesn't belong? The building to reverts it? to us at the conclusion of the lease. Does it really? It's interesting. I mean, I mean, how do you explain that's an interesting structure? Okay, it's just, okay. So then, if she owns the building, does she pay property taxes on yes. it? Yes. She does, okay. All righty. Um, are you going to do an appraisal of the site? Yes. You are, okay. When in your process is that going to be done? The appraisal has been done already. Oh, it has been done. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, are you going to share? No. No. Why not? Uh, this is a, we're selling the building. We're selling the property, and I th I would think that you would want us to be stewards of the process so that we could okay. get the most for the property. If we put out there what we think it's worth, and it's worth, we are negotiating against ourselves. Okay. All right. I can buy that. I'll buy that. I'll give huh? it to you. <laughs> All right. So I'm glad to hear that because then you have some benchmark in order to evaluate all those proposals when they come in with, with prices and you know which ones are absolutely out of the ballpark and which ones are in, right? Yes. Or are you going to go with the highest bidder? We do, it's not required to go with the highest bidder. We certainly want to get as much as we can from the process. I agree. Okay. All right. I think you've answered my questions. Um, which one is outstanding? The. Uh, the current assessment of the police station property. Okay. All right. The Thank restation you. house. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to address the township committee? Hi, my name is Valerie Huffnagel, H-U-F-N-A-G-E-L. I reside at 623 Ridgewood Road. Um, 
And since we're on the post office, I might as well just continue it on. Uh, I'm a relative newbie to the town. Um, I just purchased the home last August of uh, 2012. And um, but the first time I saw Maplewood was probably about 20 years ago. And I fell in love with it. Um, I'm a con I work in construction. And I was doing two different projects through the last years in, in Maplewood. Uh, one on Hoffman and one on North Crescent. And when I drove into the village, I absolutely fell in love. And when I decided to move back to New Jersey, which is my home state, I was living in New York for a while, uh, Maplewood was my game plan. So um, I, I kind of heard about the whole post office thing that was going on, and I just wanted to find out and get involved. Um, one of the reasons I love Maplewood is because of the history, the historic preservation, the old homes. I have a home that's dated to 1884, and it's what I've always wanted and, and just adore, okay? Um, so last week, oh, I'm sorry, two weeks ago was the first time I came to a council meeting, and I really just wanted to listen, and I did. And I, I just thought of some observations that I thought were important um, in general. And, you know, the conversation we talked, there was conversation in regards to the trash and being put out into the, side, into the street. And, you know, this was, this was an issue and completely understand that. Um, the concept of the four to six foot fence, which I agree with. I actually wanted a six foot fence, but I was told I had to do a four and I'm happy I did a four. Um, but one of the those things that I thought that was as part of my observation and was puzzling to me is that there was these conversations in with how Maplewood looks and appears and you know what a six-foot fence how it would change the look of the community um, but the whole post office site which I think is you know a massive transition within the town um, I would just like to see as a resident um, homeowner, uh, concerned citizen, and someone who adores the town and the village to basically get an idea of what um, the council and, and the mayor are considering for the site and, you know, share that with the community. And that's really what my concern is. Um, as much transparency as possible because this will make a significant transformation in what the village is going to look like. Okay. Um, and I was wondering, uh, apparently, and I, I just saw on the, on the agenda that there's going to be uh, a comment about the post office um, and the lease extension or something. Uh, it was the first time I had heard of it. Is this something that, I'm assuming this is something that's going to be talked about, but nothing's really been brought up since August. Is it any particular reason um, that there has been nothing on the agenda for the post office site? Um. Since August, yeah, I, I, think I don't think so. First week of August. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't remember the, uh, I don't think there was anything last meeting, but I think there right. was something the meeting before. But in any okay. event, um, yeah, if, if there's not something that we have to either discuss or decide, then we don't put it on the agenda. Okay, okay, right. So um, the, the uh, eight proposals have come in, and they're, I know that they're online, and my wish is that also that as much information is shared with the public as possible so that we have input before something goes up that's going to really change what the village looks like. Well, can I um, just comment that uh, both you and Mr. Strupp mentioned eight proposals came in. Right. And what we got was eight responses to a request for qualifications. Correct. We did not get proposals. Okay. So what we put up was the information about the qualifications of each of the developers, which is what we had asked for. Right. Some of them were more detailed than others. They didn't have to be. Some had renderings, others did not. And we are now going to start meeting with each of them, because it also said that online, and um, talk more about their qualifications and the history and ass assess their, their capability of uh, working with us. At that point, we will select some number out of that eight to submit proposals. Okay. And the proposals will be more detailed. Now, as far as what our vision is, 
That's contained in the uh, plan that we approved. That's also on the website. Okay. So that basically talks about some bulk requirements of how large, how high, things Correct. like that. You know, how many uh, units, 25 right. is the max, things like that. So that's the vision. That's sort of the overall vision. And then these developers are going to come in and um, bid against one another as to right. what we think is, I mean, price matters, what they're willing to pay for, for the site and what they're proposing to build um, and how they're going to meet all the other requirements of parking and traffic and uh, energy right. efficiency and things like that. Terrific. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks for coming out. Anyone else want to address the Township Committee? Okay. We're going to close the, this public comment period. We have a hearing now on uh, termination of the redevelopment agreement and designation of Davies. Mr. Vina, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and also your client? Yes. May members of the committee, my name is Joseph A. Vina, V-E-N-A, <coughs> the firm Mandelbaum Salzburg, and I represent uh, the uh, developer Davies 14 LLC designated as the redeveloper of 1611 Springfield Avenue. I have with me this evening Matthew Ferb, who is the Director of Operations of Davies Enterprises, developer of this property. I'd like to ask Matthew to come up. And before we start, <coughs> uh, I had I've been advised uh, prior to the meeting that there was uh, taxes and various municipal payments were due from the developer. I'm happy to tell you that prior to this meeting beginning, I gave to Mr. Desiderio four checks which pay the taxes for 212, the taxes for the first year, 213, and the water and sewer. Based upon my client's discussions with the municipality, I believe that those four checks bring everybody, bring everything current. So with respect to municipal obligations, they're current. <coughs> uh, We've had some discussions over the past few weeks, and uh, what I'd like Mr. Verb to do, Matthew to do, is <clears throat> answer a few questions from me, and then be subject to any questions you might have so that we can make a case for uh, not having the developer's agreement terminated. Uh, Mr. Verb, right? Yes. V-E-R-E-B, right? Correct. Okay, just for the record, it's V-E-R-E-B. Matthew's the first name. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Matthew, uh, as you know, there's, there had been an ongoing uh, issue with respect to the issuance of the building permit and the provision <coughs> by the developer to the township of the plans that were required for the building permit. Correct. And I'd like you to address these issues and as of now, with respect to the requests for uh, plans by Mr. Mittermeier, when was the last submission to Mr. Mittermeier and what did it include? Okay. Basically, we've been working with uh, Mr. Mittermeier. We have had gone through several um, revisions of the plans in response to his questions. I think we um, submitted about three applications to him. Sets okay. of plans. Sets of plans, uh, revised sets of plans on different dates uh, that addressed his, his concerns. The last set of plans that we submitted, which I believe address you know, all of his final concerns, were submitted to him back on uh, September 26th, and we're awaiting his review. Did those plans address every one of the, each of the requests of Mr. Mittermeier, or were, there, were the plans lacking in any specific requests? There was one request from Mr. Mittermeier that we're unable to furnish at this time. What is that? What was that request? He requested that we furnish a uh, a fault current information letter from PSENJ. What is a fault current information letter? It's something that's supplied by the utility company that uh, demonstrates the available current or amperage that is available at a given point in PSENG's power grid. Why have you been un unable to submit that letter? At the present time, we don't have fully known tenants for the retail portions of the building. As tenants come online, they're going to have different electrical requirements and different amperage 
requirements for the services for their space. And that is going to change the full current information that is obtained from PSENJ. With respect to the <clears throat> plans that you've submitted, uh, without the fault current power letter, uh, at this point, although you haven't heard from Mr. Mittermar yet, but assuming everything that you've submitted is consistent with what Mr. Mittermar has wanted, has asked for, uh, what permits you be entitled to? Uh, footing and foundation, building, <clears throat> and plumbing at this time. Without the full current power certification, <clears throat> Would you be able to begin construction with permits on the footing foundation, the building, and the plumbing? Yes. And if uh, you did begin the construction, uh, if the plans that you submitted were approved by Mr. Mittermeier, notwithstanding you don't have that full current piece, how soon, if those permits were issued for the footing foundation, building, and plumbing, how soon would you begin the construction? within two weeks of issuance of the permits. Once construction began, <clears throat> uh, what would be the time frame within which you'd be able to secure the last piece with respect to the fault current? It would probably take about two months' time. Obviously, at that point, we're subject to PSE and G's schedule and air cooperation, but all that information would <coughs> certainly be able to be provided where it was necessary to have the first electrical inspection on a job. So, in the past, have you done other projects where this issue has come up with respect to the fault current power letter? I, I've been asked for it one time in my career, and it was basically at the at the end of a end of a project, end of a completion of a large apartment complex. Um, I've never been asked for it at time of permit submission. Something that. PSE and G controls. It's not anything that the town or us as contractors can can change. Would the failure to have that letter in any way prevent you from beginning the building process within two weeks of issuance of permits if permits are issued by Mr. No. You ready to proceed? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, I'm just. I have no other questions. I, I, I open it up to the Mr. Desiderio. Before, before we do that, uh, I spoke to Mr. Vina earlier, and I, uh, uh, Mr. Mittermeier is on vacation. Yep. Uh, but Mr. Manning did have an opportunity to reach out to Mr. Mittermeier and got a, uh, a text message back from him. So he should share that with you, I think. Okay. Sure. Jay, uh Mr. Mittermeier uh, said to me uh, at today at 1.50, plans were delivered, I believe, last Friday for the comments I made several months ago. I have not been able to go over the new submittal. The letter of transmittal did refer to two issues pertaining to the adjacent chimney and electric, which, I, if I remember correctly, was not addressed by the attorney or the architect for Davies, and that was the end of the text. So that is the question I have. In the building next door, there are three issues. There's an, a, a, an air conditioner, a unit air conditioner that comes out of the building that has to be moved. Okay. There's um, the electrical service for that building that has to be moved because if, once you build your building, you're going to be next to it. Okay. And there's a chimney that runs along that building. Have you made any arrangements with the building next door to do any of this work? We have attempted to contact the owner of the building several times by certified or registered letter. Turn to us, return to sender, undeliverable. Yeah, so, so, if, so the answer is no. So you haven't had any success? We haven't had any success. So you're not going to get are, a permit? We are certainly willing to work with him at some point in the future to address those issues. We'll, we'll, if, if, if these issues are not resolved within two weeks, that prevent you from beginning the construction back to any permits that Mr. Minimar could issue? No. 
Well, you don't know that. I don't think Mr. Mr. Mittermeier is not going to issue those permits to, for you to start building footings and foundations with those things unresolved. We don't want a situation where you put a foundation there and you come back and tell us that you're sending certified letters to the building next door and they're not responding. And that sits there for another year. The, uh, I was not aware until very recently of this situation and when I discussed it with Davies, I was advised, I, I, I was aware just from recently of the, the air conditioning uh, of an air conditioner that intrudes over the property line onto the Davies property. And I, was involved, and I didn't know about the chimney, nor did I know about the electrical service. Uh, notwithstanding, with respect to those, the air conditioner, I was advised that if the owner of the adjacent property didn't comply with satisfying what would be necessary to remove that encroachment, legal action would be taken and I would assume that that would include now the other two items that I'm aware of, electrical service. And I don't know what the, you know, I don't know what the problem is with the electrical service. Well, the electrical service problem is that once you build your building, BSC and G is not going to get in, be able to get in between the two buildings to do, to do work on the electrical service. Electrical service is on that side of the building. It has to be moved by PSE and G to another side of the building. Oh, the electrical service of the adjacent building. Correct. Okay. And the chimney is the same thing. You have a chimney there, which is basically going to cut off access to, to that building. It has to be either raised or, I don't think you can relocate it, but you have to do something with it. And, you know, Mr. Veen, I understand you're telling us that, you know, you're getting this stuff new, but this stuff is not new. I'm not saying it's not no. new. No. Yeah. I, I just want to tell you, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Verbal, yeah. um, when we signed a contract with you back in November, around November 2010, almost three years ago, we were very excited to be doing business with, with you. We had worked with you on the the prior work with the Walgreens property and then it was shifted over to Eden Properties, but we had a good relationship with, with Davies. But after this delay and uh, the performance of your folks, I, you're not the type of developer that I want to work with in Maplewood. I'm sorry. I mean, we're doing a lot of development here and you heard from other folks, they want us to protect their community. And that thing has been an eyesore on a gateway to Springfield Avenue. And, and uh, you know, you're asking us now to delay this or give you another chance to, to remedy the, the situation. No, we're, we're not asking you to delay it anymore. I mean, we're, we're here, we're ready to move forward. We're ready to put the past behind us. We are looking to be a good neighbor and address these issues, you know, as they arise on the site are ready, willing, and able to proceed. Anything from my colleagues? Hard to make a decision about this without direct input from Mr. Mittermeier. Right. Well, I can tell you, it's, Mr. Mittermeier is going to be looking at what came in. You know, I spoke to him. He's going to be looking at what came in. Basically, that's what Mr. Manning said. But um, this is not new. And... You know, if, I, would, I would say what we ought to do here is uh, vote to terminate this in 30 days unless construction commences. The <clears throat> Mr. Desiderio, that sounds like that's, that's within our power to do, correct? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, what, what my suggestion would be, Mayor, as opposed to, to passing the resolution, I would, if you're going to delay it for 30 days, then I would just carry it for two meetings. And carry it again, and, and rather than pass the resolution now, if you're going to give them a 30-day extension or 28-day extension, whatever it is, with an understanding there will be no additional hearing, and the resolution will come on, and it'll be it'll be subject to passage. We, well, I, so look, ultimately we want we want uh, we want construction to start here, right? If permits get if permits get issued, if all the necessary uh, paperwork is handled, if permits are issued, and we're able to get started. 
then I think we're, we're fine with proceeding here. Otherwise, we would be terminating the thing right now, right? So I would vote to terminate it right now. And I have issue with um, three permits to proceed without the electrical. I mean, that's, yeah, that's not an that's issue. Not an okay, issue, yeah. then let's add the three protrusions. Um, you know, the three pieces of uh, boxes and chimneys from the well, those adjacent. Are that, those are different issues. Those are, those are issues that are separate and apart. Right. Okay. And what I'm, I'm hearing, I think, is that these gentlemen are not familiar with that, and yet those issues have been, I don't know. Well, there's two. I, I, I no, would disagree. Yeah, there's two issues with the, the one is the electric service has to be moved. Right. The other thing that you're saying is uh, out of the ordinary request is the load capacity. Right. You want to know the load capacity. That's a different issue. Right. And, and I think that that's reasonable because you don't know who your tenants are and the type of businesses on the first floor, so you're... You may not be able to tell us what the load is. For example, if it's a restaurant, it's going to be a higher load than if it's a, a sneaker sh shop. Yeah. Or a laundromat or something. Yeah. Yes. So I think that. But clearly, the electric service that's on the adjacent building has to be resolved before you, you put a wall next to it. And Well, in, in the last letter or last email that I got from Mr. Mittermeier, you know, he sums those items up and he goes on to say that the owner of that property must cooperate in the relocation of that service equipment. Right. Okay, if he doesn't say he's not willing to issue the permit until, you know, he's completely satisfied with that, he's making a statement saying that the property owner must cooperate. Well, let me tell you, there's a, there's a philosophical difference that, that, I, that I think your company has in Mr. Mittermeier. Mr. Mittermeier clearly can issue the footings and foundation permit. No question about it. There may be, you know, there's some things, because if you look at his email, there's some cleaning up of things like that. Which we've but, done in the last submission. Okay. But he wants, he wants some certainty that, that the other happen. items are going to be dealt with so that we don't have a situation where it happens, people put the foundation in, mm -hmm. and then walk away or say, you know, we got other things to do. Um, um, Okay. I, I, I just wish he was a little clearer in, in stating that, and then we, we certainly would address okay. that right. in a different uh, manner. Uh, Ms. Leventhal, anything more? And then, hold on, let me, Mr. Vina, let's let the t Township Committee speak. Well, I, my bottom line concern was that construction is 50% done with permits, and then it can't continue because of the impediments on the adjacent building. Um, and. We're worse off than we are, <laughs> very much worse off. Larry? I just have a couple of questions, just for my own understanding on the background. We signed this agreement with Davies in 2010. Correct. Correct. Mr. Mittermeier has sent a text that he received information from Davies from requests that he made when? I mean, well, the, the several months ago. Several, okay, so my, my question to you, Mr. Is it Verb? Yes. Um, is where have you been for several months? And why have we not, why is it now that we have started these proceedings that suddenly you're getting information to Mr. Mittermeier? Where have you been since 2010? We, we have made a, another submission in that time period to him. Um, we've been working with the architects in, that, in our office. Um, we had hired a new junior architect to take on this project. We started it and he did the first submission to Mr. Mittermeier. Um, based on the amount of comments that came back from him, it was clear to us that this junior architect was going to be able to see this project through to completion. We gave it to one of our more senior members and, and terminated the junior architect. They've been working it. Final result was the, the submission on September 26th, addressing Mr. Minimeyer's concerns. September 26th of 2013. Correct. Mr. Minimeyer's email was August 21st, 2013. The other dates, the planning, the, the 
redevelopment agreement was in 2010. The planning board approved and certified, uh, pro approved the motion for this on March 13th, 2012. So we're now over a year. year and a half, over a year and a half. 18 months pa since you got planning board approval and your, the contract says that redeveloper uh, has to demolish the building after getting approval and then commence construction within 30 days of receipt of the building permit. But you guys have been so unable to get the building permit, it just doesn't make sense. Well, we Go ahead. I think we're at the point where assuming, assuming the plans that have been submitted on September 26th conform to everything that Mr. Mittermeier is requesting, except for the issue relative to the electrical uh, uh, the service Load factor. fault right. issue. Uh, uh, they should be able to proceed. As you said, that's something that certainly could be pulled into line. The only concern I have with having a 30-day deadline is, uh, and I can, I, I appreciate, you know, you've been very patient with this, so I'm not looking to be argumentative on, on what you want to do. But as an advocate, if, uh, uh, if, the air conditioner and the electric, if, the ele if, if the neighbor doesn't cooperate, legal action will have to be taken. Uh, I would think that legal action would be successful in getting the result that's needed for this development to proceed. Um, as long as that legal action is going on and it's, and it's satisfying Mr. Mittermeier's concern that we can go ahead with permits, the work for the other permits, uh, we would like the opportunity to do that because even if we had to get an order to show cause, it's not going to happen in 30 days, but the process should be in place so we can show our good intentions. And, and, and I don't disagree that we shouldn't do anything about it and get our permits and just go on and wait for something to happen. We should have to go ahead and commence whatever proceedings are necessary to uh, have the chimney resolved, have the electrical resolved, and have the air conditioning resolved. But I, uh, if, those, if those problems are within the domain of the adjacent property owner, uh, I, I don't think it's fair that the developer's contract should be terminated if he's, in, if he's got to go and proceed with legal action to get the results he needs. Rowley. <coughs> Pardon me. Understanding everything you said makes sense as we're sitting here today, all the stipulations you're talking about. But I guess my concern is that those same conversations could have been had 18 months ago, it sounds like, to me. And what was it that it took getting to this point and now we're asking for that? I appreciate also, I don't know if it's material, that the taxes were not paid, but they're current now. It took like an extra push for all that to happen. And, and I appreciate there's movement given all the push, but in terms of people we want to work with, if we require all that pushing on our part, it, I, don't know, I don't know if I'm making a, a, a statement here as much as a, as a feeling, but um, I'm not entirely comfortable that the only motion that's happening seems to be only happening when you know you're sort of at the point of a gun you know you're, you have to be pushed to this point so so i i frankly do have some serious reservations given that all the things you're saying they sound entirely reasonable but it seems like those same conversations could have been had quite some time ago and it's only under the threat of having the the agreement terminated that now there's motion happening. Thank you. Mr. Ryan. So um, I, I think the mayor is very clear that he'd vote to um, terminate this agreement right now. And I think you gathered that I'm not interested in terminating the agreement right now, but uh, I'm no less frustrated by the lack of forward progress than my colleagues are. So um, what I'd like to know before I would agree to extend this thing another 30 days is, what am I going to see differently? 
in, in two weeks, in four weeks, from what I've seen right now. Because I gotta tell you, if, if you come to us in a month and we're in exactly the same place, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel like you, you played me and I should have voted to terminate it today. So what am I going to see that's different? We're not looking to, to play anyone. This is a, a lovely, this is a great approval. It's great for the community. Developers ready, willing, able to proceed. But for the fact of the problems with the neighbors, what I'd like to be able to show you is that uh, I'm hopeful that when Mr. Mittermeier reviews the submission, that came in September 26th, but for the electrical issue, uh, the voltage issue, everything would be in order for permits to be issued. And within the 30 days, there'll be, I'd like to be able to show you the action that's being taken in order to alleviate the three issues on the adjacent property with the understanding that <coughs> the progress being made in the development isn't going to be impaired by that. I don't know, uh, uh, quite honestly, I, I'm, I just became aware within the last week or so of the air conditioning problem. And when I addressed it with babies, I told that they're trying to work with the owner. If he doesn't respond, they're going to bring an action. Uh, if the same issue has to be dealt with with respect to the chimney and the uh, uh, electrical service that it'll all be included but some kind of action will be taken to show this township that babies is doing whatever they have to do to resolve the, the issues on the adjacent property notwithstanding uh, if permits are issued they can begin regular construction pursuant to the plans and and I can't with that which I hope you'll go along with I'm not telling you that in 30 days the chimney's going to be moved, and the, but the action will be in place. If, or if they're not in place, then you do what you have to do. You know, the only thing that, that gives me any hesitation, hesitation, hesitation in, in dropping Davies right now is that Mr. Mittermeier has not been able to fully look at the, the set of plans that were delivered last week. Um, but I, I do know because we're at that building, we're, we're on the avenue all the time, and I know that nothing's changed on that building next door. And now I'm hearing, you know, certified letters. I didn't even hear somebody went into the building to talk to the people there. At the door. You know? We, we have tried that. Wow, well, okay. There's nobody there. Um, <laughs> Is the building vacant? No, there's... No, there's, there's tenants in there. Two tenants in the building. Not, not and somebody, you know, somebody has an address on our tax rolls. Not but, to throw my client okay, under look, the bus. I don't want, I don't want you to. <laughs> Mr. Vino, look. Uh, Mr. Ryan um, seems to suggest that we, there might be room for waiting until our meeting on November 4th but we don't want to be played. And we don't want you to come back to tell us what you're gonna do about these problems. We want you to come back and say either the permit's been issued and here's the date of construction or here is what we have done about the, pro the problems. I don't intend to come before this body with credibility, you know, I'm not gonna impair my credibility and play it. So if, when we come back on November 4th, You'll be advised of what, what's been done, what's going to be done, whether I do it, whether in-house counsel, I don't know. But I honestly know, I can honestly tell you that until about a week ago, I didn't know anything except for the air conditioner. And when I spoke to Davies' representative, uh, I was told that either it's going to be removed or we're bringing a lawsuit. So, This is what I would recommend, that we table this to November 4th, at the same time, we um, asked Mr. Desiderio to start um, uh, evaluating the process for us to take this property by eminent domain. It is in a redevelopment area. And also that we instruct uh, Annette de Palma, our Director of Community Relations, to begin the preparation of a request for proposals for this site. 
so that if in fact we do terminate you, we can begin the process of looking for another developer and we can start the process of eminent domain if necessary. <coughs> oh, just to be clear, I, I, I don't disagree. Um, but just to be clear, are we continuing this hearing so we're going to pick up where we left off and expect Mr. Vina to be here in a month? Well, so he says either he or uh, in-house counsel. No, I no, just, uh, I mean in-house counsel with respect to how they're going to deal with it. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, <clears throat> okay. Yes, that's, yeah. No, I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure, I'm, that's what I thought. I just want to make yeah. sure that everybody is clear on where we're going. Okay. That sound all right? So we should get a motion to table this to November, or carry this to November 4th. So essentially, we are, Suspending. if I understand what we're doing, we're giving you the additional 30 days, but we are still moving forward, so should you not do what you need to do, we'll be ready to go. Right. So there's no wiggle room, sir. Understood. Okay. We got a motion to well, that. Can I just one this? more thing? Second. Well, I'm sorry. One more thing. Um, uh, what... What constitutes something happening? Min what minimal? Well, we have Mr. Mittermeier has to review the latest submission. It's possible he would issue a permit. If that was the case, then um, they would be able to start. You, you represented tonight. You'd start two, two weeks after two weeks the permit is permits. issued. And that's one scenario. Right, right. The that's, other scenario is that yeah. they could come back and say that they've successfully negotiated with the property next door to move those items that Mr. Minnemeyer has flagged. And it's kind of like this bar and that's this bar and this, what's, what's this bar? <laughs> that yeah, well, maybe they've initiated legal proceedings because they're not cooperative. Right. Or something and then like I think that. we have to evaluate that. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to, you know, do, do we feel like these folks are making a good faith effort to move the ball right. forward and doing every single thing that's possible to do and then some to get to the point of redeveloping this property. Yeah, and, I, and if, and yeah, if I guess I was trying to understand what's, what's like the minimal evidence of good faith effort. Yeah, maybe that's it. And you know what, I, I, bet you, you, I bet you we all have different, a different sense of what that is. But you know, so for me, you know, you, you've either got permits or, or you've initiated well, legal action to deal with the, the things that are getting in the way. I think you should prejudge it. I think right. you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna hear again we'll on November we'll 4th, and right. you'll, I mean, that's the whole idea of, of having an additional hearing. I, I think you're on November 4th judgment. we'll know. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, so I would, I, would, um, I would move to um, suspend this hearing until November 4th. Second. And begin those other two things with yes. Mr. Desiderio. Yes, yes, and, 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 Okay, so we moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Bramley? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Thank Vina, you. Mr. Vina, November 4th is a Monday because the governing body will not meet on the Tuesday because of Election Day. So mark your calendar. It's a Monday, November 4th, not Tuesday. Okay. And we will not send out additional notices. This is your notice. This is our notice. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up is our monthly Board of Health meeting. Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, this is to state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building, by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2013 to the news record and star ledger in December 2012, and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Mr. Bramley? Here. Mayor DeLuca? Here. Ms. Leventhal? Here. Mr. Ryan? Here. Mrs. Larry? Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires all meetings of public bodies to be open to the public, and whereas Section 7 revised that the Maplewood Board of Health has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the active participation of the public at any meeting, and whereas desire of the Maplewood Board of Health to comply with the provisions of this act, same time conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner, now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Health of the Township of Maplewood, does hereby prohibit except as set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the Board of Health by the public, except as otherwise prescribed by law, does limit the public to the observation of the actions and discussions of the Board of Health at all of its regular meetings. So moved. Second. 
Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mrs. Larry? Yes. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to the Board of Health meeting for October. Um, you all received you all received the minutes from last month's Board of Health. So meeting. move. Second. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Uh, we'll have our report from our health officer, Mr. Rowe. Uh, this month's going to be a, our flu clinic month. We're having a, our first clinic on Saturday, uh, October 19th here at the town hall, and then the following Wednesday, um, 1023 at the town hall. So we'll be uh, doing a lot of advertising on that. Uh, this coming Friday, the Humane Society will be back in front of the town hall. They were full last week and they wanted to come this week again. So uh, that uh, project's hitting a very responsive note and we'll continue to work as, with them as much as we can. And then um, in response to the uh, change in, proposed change in ordinance for the dog, license, dog and cat licensing, we'll be holding a free rabies clinic on November 9th. Um, the nurses prepared a packet of flyers on the Affordable Health Care Act with particular attention to small businesses and we're considering the idea of having staff go door to door and distribute these at small businesses in the township. They get their attention where everything else didn't so uh, I think that'll be a good use of time to help uh, people get signed up. It seems to me that small businesses probably have employees who aren't uh, covered by health insurance. So this will be one way to help get the word out. Um, the nurses uh, this month did a very excellent program for the child care centers on immunizations and they prepared a book for each child care center showing what shots are needed at what ages. Uh, so that the staff at the daycare center can tell the parents what shots their child's need. This is an, a thing, something we do annually. We don't do the program annually, but we do immunization audits annually to make sure all children in child care centers are immunized. One of the new requirements is children have to be immunized against flu, and uh, it's been about for the last four years. And I don't think it's been proven yet, but I suspect some of the reasons we've had less flu is because more children are getting vaccinated. And I think it's a good public health policy to protect the children and it has the additional effect of protecting the general public. Uh, finally, on October 10th, the Essex County Health Officers in Essex County uh, will be holding a special meeting at the Essex County Hospital Center uh, concerning medical need shelters. So we'll be moving ahead with that planning. And if any of the board members want to attend, uh, you're more than welcome to attend. That's my report. There's another flyer also for individuals and just... Yes. Yes, it's three, three pages. One is kind of, we folded it in half. Another thing says, think about things to think about when choosing a plan for your business, specifically directed towards small businesses. And then there's the other flyer, which pre was prepared earlier in the month, which was widely distributed. I think the administrator's office may have sent it out email blast. Yep. And we also sent it to houses of worship, community organizations, um, all the different websites. So. Um, you know, we're helping get the word out and we'll continue to do that over the next several months. Right. My apologies if you address this in your remarks while I had to step away, but is the, uh, I know that there's a, a, a flu vaccine clinic coming up. Yes. Uh, is the um, government shutdown, federal government shutdown, going to have any effect on your ability to uh, do that work? No, we already have the vaccine, we have the Great. syringes, we have the staff, Great. we have the doctor, we're Great. ready to go. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Rowe, I just want to thank you for your leadership on the affordable health care stuff. Okay. We, we mentioned it at the 
August meeting or September meeting? I don't remember when it was, but you moved quickly on it and you got that, uh, that flyer done. And I understand that this, by this morning, a million people had logged on to the uh, affordable health care. So you can claim some credit for that. <laughs> At least half of those. You crashed the website. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You crashed the website. They got more, more than they expected. Okay, but, and, uh, and I do want to give credit to our nurses. They yeah, no, I job. said that before, but you also took the leadership <laughs> here because you said that you weren't that familiar with it and you would get on it, and you did, and uh, you got it out. I think it's a big help, and it's also, I think that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing, being proactive. So, Great. Thank you for your... Any other questions? Mr. Manning. I, did, I don't remember hearing. I don't remember hearing the. Uh, you can't hear anything working. with the microphone, right? right. <laughs> when is when are the flu clinics? Uh, the first one is Saturday, October nineteenth, and the second one is uh, Wednesday, October twenty third. Um, what times? The the one on Saturday will be from noon to two, and the one on Wednesday will be from ten to twelve. Here. Yes, right in this room. Right where you're sitting. And everyone, is, anyone can come get a flu shot? Uh, it's open to people 18 and over. If we haven't already, let's get the announcement of that on the website as well. And if, it's, if you think it's, Mr. Manning, if you think it's appropriate to blast it out. Oh, we will. Is that there's no cost? For the flu shots? Yes, yes there is a cost. Uh, we accept Medicare Part B, and we also, um, if you're younger than that, for Medicare and you want a flu shot, it's $20. It's a bargain price. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? I have a comment. 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 Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Rowe for all his work on the very successful Maplewood Loves Wellness Fair. Came up with a, a new uh, program, which was the uh, Healthy Cooking Contest that uh, even Loren has entered and won, actually, um, one of the two winners. So um, that's something I think will continue. Uh, it was a, a good, good uh, it, the people really enjoyed it very much. It was a it, good day, it, and thank you for your leadership on it. You were the real leader that took us to, and we had some really great volunteers, too, oh, yeah. who we should uh, make sure we recognize properly at some point. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you, Mr. Rowe, and thank you for all your work. At this point, we come to the time where we invite the public to come and address the Board of Health. Is there anyone who would like to address the Board of Health? Being no one running up the aisles, I will close the public <laughs> comment section and take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Branley? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mrs. Larry? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now back at the main uh, meeting agenda. We're on item number 12. We have an ordinance on final passage. So Mayor, item number 12, ordinance on final passage, ordinance number 2729-13. It's an ordinance to amend Chapter 113 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Dogs, Cats, and Other Animals. This ordinance will make certain changes to the licensing of dogs and cats within the Township of Maplewood. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this particular ordinance? Seeing no one, uh, Mrs. Larry, can we get a motion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Branley? Yes. Mrs. Larry? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. We have another ordinance on final. Mayor, item number 13, ordinance on final passage, ordinance number 2730-13. It's an ordinance to amend chapter 257 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Vehicles and Traffic. This ordinance will reduce the speed limit on Valley Street from 35 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. 
This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this ordinance? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the committee. I'm Tom Carlson from 44 Summer Avenue in Maplewood. Members of the committee, I'm here tonight to urge you to reconsider and go slow on this proposed reduction of the speed limit on Valley Street. I'm concerned about the possibility of unintended consequences by disrupting traffic flow uh, if the speed limit is actually reduced that much. I think it's imp <clears throat> I'm certainly mindful of the concerns my fellow citizens and neighbors have about safety, um, especially the residential neighbors on Valley Street. But I think it's equally important to um, think long and hard about the uh, possible outcomes and to consider other means and measures before making this, um, uh, this measure take place. In particular, I would, I would advocate a strong and rigorous enforcement campaign with the present 35 mile an hour speed limit to see if that changes anything or if that eases anyone's concerns. Um, as one data point, I would point out, and it was somewhere in the neighborhood of a year ago, I don't remember exactly when, when the county made some fairly minor adjustments to the timing of the traffic lights on uh, both Baker and Tuscan, I believe. And the effect of that for many days was to back traffic up, especially going, especially going south toward uh, Milburn Avenue. <clears throat> and it took some intervention by, uh, intervention by Mr. Malabasi and others to get the county to correct the, uh, their mistake. Um, also, if you've seen on Valley Street or any other busy street, whenever there's construction or perhaps the utility people trimming trees, a fairly minor change in traffic patterns can create, can create backups. So for those reasons, I would urge you to, um, as I already said, to reconsider this proposal, uh, to be mindful of the fact that if you do reduce the speed limit, it's probably very difficult to increase it again. Um, as, as you know from a liability standpoint, if you make a determination that safety is involved, it's hard to walk that back. So that's my, my recommendation and my request for you um, concerning this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address this? Ordinance. Julie Martini, 12, Briarcliff Court. <clears throat> this is Valley Road from where to where? Um, South Orange border to Milburn Avenue. To Milburn Avenue. Um, it sounds like a good idea, but you know, Valley Road at a certain point is, is the way that people who are commuting can get to 24 and 78 and in the morning there's a tendency to rush <coughs> um, although I, I, I kind of think it is a good idea so that, that's just my, my comment so you think it's a good idea to change the law thank you anyone else okay we'll close the public hearing uh, Mr. Ryan um, Are you not going to uh, uh, yeah, want I'm somebody else to introduce it? No, it's fine. I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the claims of past ordinance the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Ryan. I, I wanted to, um, Mr. Carl, I encouraged Mr. Carlson to come this evening. He phoned me uh, to discuss the ordinance uh, today and uh, he wasn't the only person who's reached out to me about both the issue of um, enforcement of, of the speed limits in general and uh, in particular uh, the unintended consequences of uh, changing the speed limit on Valley Street and perhaps redirecting uh, people who want to get through town quickly to to other places. Um, I'm not as worried as some folks who spoke to me uh, were. I don't think that people are going to um, speed up the streets that are parallel to Valley to get to Springfield Avenue, uh, but I, I am a little worried about uh, effective enforcement. So uh, I, I'm, I'm beginning to be persuaded that, that um, moving a little slowly on this um, and perhaps either uh, studying potential traffic patterns a little more or amping up the enforcement of the current limit on Valley a little more uh, wouldn't be uh, a better idea at this time. It doesn't preclude us um, moving forward, but I, I think it's, I think the point's worthy of discussion. 
Any other comments? Larry? Um, I, I too have had some discussions. Um, however, I'm not convinced that not enforcing the laws is a reason not to change the law. I think it just means that we need to step up enforcement. I see this as being a good thing, and my understanding, and I might be wrong, but my understanding is South Orange is also considering it, which would then, even if we don't change, still has the effect of having a slowdown on Valley. It just happens not to be in Maplewood. So if, if that's the case and South Orange is considering it, then from well past South Orange Avenue through to Milburn would all be 25 miles an hour, which to me is fine, especially with South Orange Middle being in that area. Um, so I'm inclined to think that yes, we do need to step up enforcement, uh, possibly all over town, but this is a good thing to change the law. Bradley. Um appreciate Mr. Carlson's remarks. Um, it's actually a, perhaps a bit of unintended irony in there, though, as well, in that if we're worried about the unintended consequences of reducing the speed limit to 25, doesn't that same logic potentially hold true for stepping up the enforcement as well? If we step up the enforcement, there may be some unintended consequences also, because presumably people will be slowing down because of the increase enforcement, in which case there may be some unintended consequences of that as well, ironically enough. So um, I'm not saying don't step up the enforcement, but the same logic would hold true for that as well. Anybody else? I think we should do it. Um, I, I, this, we did study this. The traffic uh, um, is roughly around 35 miles an hour uh, in different aspects of uh, different se segments of the road. We already have 25 miles an hour when children are present uh, as you, near the high school. Um, that, that area is a, uh, a pedestrian path for kids going to both the high school and to uh, Tuscan? Maplewood Middle. And Maplewood Middle, correct. Uh, it is a residential, it has a residential character other than South Orange, and um, I think we should move forward. Anything else? Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? No. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Passes four to one. Just as a reminder, uh, since this is a county road, this will now be submitted to the county engineer, and it's up to the county to make the final determination. So this is by no means a done situation, although the county engineer has been receptive. So uh, I'm going to ask that uh, Mr. Manning, ask Mr. Malavasi to send a copy of this resolution to the uh, county engineer. Question concurrent with this, because I, I, I'm generally in favor, obviously I voted affirmatively for the reduction. Um, do we need to initiate anything in terms of the studies to uh, monitor the effects of the change once it does actually take effect so that we can be in a position to react if there are any unanticipated consequences, quote unquote? I assume there may, be need, may need to be some adjustments, potentially. Sure. Uh, we, we can discuss, I don't know if this is working. We can discuss that with the uh, police chief uh, at our public safety committee meeting and see how he wants to uh, you know, move forward with that. I, I'm, I was thinking, I'm more thinking engineer, you're talking about enforcement and counts and things. No, I was thinking more in terms of, uh, I guess, potentially engineering, if you would. If, if it affects the traffic flows, if we find there are, is in fact some redirection oh, okay. of traffic in other areas it. as a result, we'll you know, I want to bas yes. basically be yes. monitoring it so that we can see the effect, if any, of the change. Okay, got it. Or if people just slow down. Okay, we have six items uh, to introduce. <laughs> item number 14. Mr. Mayor, item number 14, introduction to new ordinance, ordinance number 2731-13. 
It's an ordinance to establish the fees for the Jitney Pass <coughs> and the Jitney Parking Combination Pass for 2014. With the pass of this ordinance on first reading, it's publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record with a hearing to be held on October 15th, 2013. Second. Any comments? Question. Yes. Um, I have a question. In the, um, this came from Public Works Subcommittee? Yes. yes. Um, I am um, interested in knowing what went into the Jitney expenses figure. 35%. Salaries, biodiesel, maintenance repair, uh, medical testing, vehicle insurance, and miscellaneous was $250. So it's salary, biodiesel, medical testing, maintenance repairs, maintenance, right. and vehicle insurance. Those are the big items. Medical testing is $200. Okay. Uh, so we don't have capital in there. That's correct. Um. We discussed it and we decided not to uh, um, include that. Okay. Um, in the past, the Transportation Committee had determined that 90%, about a 90%, um, was uh, the fees covered about 90 percent. This seems to be a big difference there. No. I, if, they, if you include the parking fees, might get up to that number. Okay. That, that, right. Okay. We made a decision not to include the parking right. fees. We would just include the jitney gotcha. fees and use that as the number. Pull the roll, please. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larry? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. We have another introduction of a new ordinance. <laughs> Item 15, ordinance number 2732-13. It's an ordinance to eliminate the sunset, sunset provision regarding the Springfield Avenue Special Improvement District. This ordinance will eliminate the sunset provision as it applies to Springfield Avenue Special Improvement District. Ms. Leventhal? I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading. It's publication according to the law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on October 15th. I'm very pleased to second this, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> Any comments? Please call the Yes. I'm sorry, just for those who might not know what that means. Uh, right now, the ordinance says that the uh, Special Improvement District on Springfield Avenue will expire at the end of this year removes that expiration and does not have a <coughs> sunset provision going forward. So in other words, that means that the, this special improvement dis district will continue Correct. indefinitely. And it, will have, and it will have the same status as the other special improvement district in town and won't have to come up for review every couple of years, which Mr. seems very appropriate to me. Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Another introduction. Item 16, Mayor, introduction of new ordinance, ordinance number 2733-13. It's an ordinance to change the times that construction work is permitted within Maplewood. This ordinance will prohibit ex excavation, demolition, construction, repair, or alteration work from beginning before 8 a.m. on Saturdays and 11 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, Mr. Ryan, I believe. Yeah. Oh, Ms. Leventhal, sorry. Thank you, Mayor. I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading as publication according to law in Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on October 15, 2013. Second. Any discussion? I just have yes. one question. Yes. This includes uh, when the county comes through and does construction? So any Ms. construction. <laughs> uh, yes. There is always an issue, uh, Ms. Larrier, of whether a, uh, and this is just a term of art, an inferior public entity can control a superior public entity. <laughs> so whether or not the township of Maplewood can uh, in those circumstances. But I will say that generally speaking, the county has been cooperative. Okay, so I don't have any reason to believe that they would not be. And of course, if there's an emergency, then 
anybody can do right. You're not suggesting that, that we're inferior to no, I was other. Just, that was general principles. <laughs> okay, uh, please call the roll. Mr. Branley? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Another introduction of an ordinance? Item 17, ordinance number 2734-13, also an introduction. Ordinance of the Township of Maplewood in the County of Essex, New Jersey, providing for the cancellation of $898,374.33 in bond and other proceeds not needed for their original purposes and to transfer $898,374.33 in bonds or other proceeds to the capital fund surplus account for future capital projects. Mr. Ryan. Mr. Chairman, I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record uh, with a hearing to be held on October 15, 2013. Second. Yes, just, um, just a comment. This is, comes from the recommendation um, uh, from the Finance Department, which in turn was recommended to the uh, Finance Committee, the Township Committee. This is something that the Township Committee does on an annual basis, takes um, old projects that have been completed and have um, uh, indebtedness remaining on them and cancels them to make um, <coughs> those funds and those obligations available for other projects. Okay, please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. Uh, another new ordinance. Yes, Mayor. Introduction to new ordinance, ordinance number 2735-13. It's an ordinance to amend chapter 123 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Fees. This ordinance will amend fees in the engineering department. I'm going to move the pass to this ordinance on first reading its publication according to law in the Maplewood Sound Thousand Orange News Record with the hearing to be held on October 15th. Second. Any comments? Please call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. We have our last ordinance on introduction. No. Ordinance number 2736-13 yes. is an ordinance to amend Chapter <coughs> 257 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Vehicles and Traffic. This ordinance will authorize the installation of stop signs at the intersection of Essex Avenue and South 4th Streets. Chair, I move the pass to this ordinance on first reading its publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record with a hearing to be held on October 15th, 2013. Second. Any comments? Please call the roll. Mr. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Ms. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you. We have four discussion items, uh, 60 Woodland Road, Mr. Ryan. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would ask um, that we defer discussion of this item to the next meeting. Uh, we received some uh, uh, extensive comments from some members of the committee, and um, I'd just like a little more time to process and to have a quality discussion with the committee as a whole. No objection. I'm sorry. Um, which committee received comments? We did. We received comments for, on um, Mr. Manning's RFP. Yes. But I just got them yesterday. I just want to get a little more time oh. to read them and process them before we can have a, a good quality discussion. Okay. That's all. Is that okay? Yes. 1015. We'll put it on the agenda for October 15th. Thank you. Uh, residential fences, four feet versus six feet. We started discussing this at the last meeting. We uh, looked at the applications to the zoning board that had to do with fences. We also circulated uh, two letters, one from Mr. Gonzalez, who was at the last meeting, and also an anonymous letter pointing out 342 homes that have six-foot fences. Um, and then we got the uh, zoning and development regulations. Uh, I would suggest that we ask, I would like to hear Mr. Middlemeyer's view on this. We left the last uh, township committee meeting with this being referred to code, okay. and the code subcommittee did meet with Mr. Mittermeier. And did you talk about this? We certainly did. And? That, that's the only thing we talked about. Okay. <laughs> we spent, so we were able to devote ourselves to it. Um, and uh, at this point, we uh, left the meeting seeking further information. For example, we did not have... Um, the letter okay um, and since then I have asked for uh, 
a better uh, explanation of the uh, zoning board's actions over okay. the last few years. So uh, we are scheduled to meet again next week, and we'll bring our recommendation back on the 15th. Okay. Put this on again for October 15th. Thank you. Rental registration, item number three. Um, this is the draft ordinance after our discussion last uh, meeting, which was a recommendation from the uh, code committee, subcommittee, to um, ask for a change in the ordinance, and we do have the draft, and uh, I can read that to refresh everybody's uh, memory. This was uh, suggested by Mr. Mittermeier, and we wanted to actually see what it looked like. So um, Mr. Desdario has put this together, <coughs> and it uh, modifies the frequency of rental inspections um, and amends Chapter 208 entitled Rental Properties to reflect that. Each rental unit shall be inspected at least once every 24-month period. We'll interject here that presently it's every 12 months. Um, there are reported issues with, if there are reported issues within a unit or a building, then the subject property shall be inspected every 12 months until two inspections have passed without critical or major issues. Um, and those problems can be found by inspectors or they could be complaints reported, uh, concerns reported. Um, we had discussed last time that there are um, 50 new units, another 124 coming on. We project another couple of hundred in the next couple of years. So um, like with a new car, you, as the mayor had mentioned, your, reg your um, inspection goes out four years. Um, so this is uh, the recommendation all around, because there are some properties that have absolutely no problems, others that do, and they are continually looked at over uh, sometimes a very long period of time. So our recommendation was to modify the vote. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Ryan. Two, two questions. Um, I thought I remembered at our last meeting that there was a discussion about uh, new units perhaps not needing an inspection for quite some time, but I didn't see that language reflected in this, or maybe I missed it. It, it, um, it, is two, it will be two years. Right, but I, rem I thought I remembered the discussion being that, that the brand new units might be able to have even a longer, do I remember, if I remember incorrectly. We, we no. talked about that, but I think we, we agreed to treat everything. Okay, equal. that's fine. And, and the other, that. okay, that's fine. And the only other question I had is, uh, are we essentially saying that we're going to take the projected revenue from rental inspections and cut it in half? Is that what this basically means? Well, no. Well, I don't see it that way. We haven't done a, a P&L on it, but um, it, because we will have in the next couple of years approximately 400 new units um, fully on board, and because there are uh, properties that will continue to be reviewed every year, um, I mean, I just, I was just thinking about it this way, right? You know, all other things being equal, now instead of having to come in and get inspected and pay an inspection fee every year, you come in and pay the same inspection fee for two years, so it's all other things being equal, half the revenue over time. Are they, actually, do we pay not, an inspection not, fee or is it just a registration fee? No. Just the registration fee. Yeah, there's no inspection fee. $50 a year. Right. No, exactly. Right. So it's every I, I, year. I'm sorry. But you still have to register. You still have to register. Excuse me one second. All rental units shall be registered with the township or designee of the township. Can you township. speak in? you got to get a little microphone. Right, I'm sorry. You're not, you are not changing the registration requirement. Mm -hmm. All this is saying is that the inspections will only be done once every 24 months. You still have to register them every year. And that's the thing that folks are paying for. Correct. Blended. That's all I need. I'm, okay. I'm completely in favor of this. Thank you. You're not affecting that aspect. Great. Thank you. Thanks for clearing that up. Anyone else? If not, we'll uh, proceed to put this on for introduction at the next meeting. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you okay? <then? laughs> you okay, Mr. Manning? 
I think so. All right. <laughs> okay, our next item is uh, post office lease extension. We have been in the discussions with the post office. They need a bit more time to um, do the work in preparation for moving out of the uh, Maplewood Avenue post office. So we have agreed to extend the lease for two months until January from November 10th, 2013 to January 9th, 2014. And the monthly rental is $15,232. That is correct, Mayor. And that incorporates effectively what the rent that they were paying to the present uh, owner of the, that incorporates what they're basically paying to the uh, present owner in rent, plus what the taxes were, uh, are on the property that were being paid. Um, less a 1% reduction uh, because the township's gonna have no maintenance responsibility with regard to the property at all. Okay. And so if we approve this, we're, what we're essentially saying is that the post office will be in Maplewood Village through the end of this calendar year. That's correct. January 9th. Ms. Leventhal. I have a question. In the uh, written communicate, the lease amendment, lease extension from the UPSP, or USPS, sorry. Uh, on page two, there's a into the whereas it talks about the USPS not having responsibility for any present structural defects or roof issues. Right. Have we had a, an assessment of that done? Because they- The answer is, the answer is no. What, what basically they're trying to say is once they give up the property, they are not responsible for what the condition of the property is. All right? We don't care because ultimately that building's coming down. That's not an issue with regard to it. And in terms, of, in terms of the township's responsibility, the township is assuming no responsibility with regard to. So that, that's really what that's referring to. There, I don't know if that, you explain it a little better. Between now and the end of the uh, two months, they're responsible for the roof. They're responsible for everything. But any existing problems Right, we can't, are not their responsibility. Right, we can't go back and sue them after Correct. the end of the lease. They have no responsibility. If they were to leave to tomorrow, they have no responsibility. Okay, so what they're simply saying is by extending it for two months, we're not going to assume any responsibility. Going forward. Right. If it leaks tomorrow, right. have an extension until January 9th. If the roof leaks goes into effect November the 9th. Right. The roof leaks on November the 10th, they have to repair it. If the roof leaks on January the 10th, after they leave, mm -hmm. they have no responsibility for it. Right. That's what this says? Yes. We'll make. Okay. That's what we want. That's why it says it. Okay. Uh, we need a motion to move this. Uh, two things, right. This is a motion to extend the lease of the post office to uh, January the 9th, 2014, and to allow the mayor and the township clerk uh, to sign the lease extension agreement with the U.S. Postal Service. So, second. Any comments? Who's called the roll? Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larry? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Consent agenda, we get a motion. Can I, uh, okay. I'm gonna ask one thing to be removed. Sure. Or I don't know if it technically has to be removed. It's uh, the minutes uh, correction. Well, you just, uh, you have a correction of the minutes of September 17th? Correct. Why don't you just make those public? Okay. On, uh, do I have to wait for the motion? No, you can uh, make it, make the, uh, Make the correction and then move it, move the consent agenda with the correction in the minutes. Okay. Um, okay. Then I'm just going to say the change. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the uh, open session minutes for September 17th, 2013, and the discussion items um, on the 60 Woodland Road section, next to last paragraph, it has some items on my remarks. And if I can get my electronic thing up here. <laughs> Second. 
Okay. The next to last paragraph, um, it, it's just grammatically, it's, it's, it says, Mr. Brownlee, comma, was, if there were any minimum criteria, as stated by Mr. Ryan in his previous conversation, that there had to be a five-year successful track record, and Mr. Brownlee was not sure what that meant. Can I just restate it? Sure. Mr. Brownlee asked if there exists any dis definition of what defines a successful track record. And if we could include some language stating what that is, because it's not clear what that means. Is that fair? That is what you said. Yeah. That's what you said. Right. Well, Mr. Chair, I, I move for the adoption of the consent agenda, including the correction to the minutes as outlined by Mr. Brownlee. Second. Okay with that? Yes. Let's call the roll. Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mr. Larrier? Yes. Mr. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuke? Yes. Public comment, is there anyone who wants to address the Township Committee? Anybody here? Seeing no one, we will uh, close that public comment. We received a report from the Construction Code official for August 2013. Administrative reports, Mr. Manning. Uh, two things. Um, the first is that the Farmers Market is still operating. We'll be operating into the last, through the last Monday of this month, 2 to 7 every Monday corner of Indiana, Springfield Avenue, please shop our local farmer's market. The second thing is, uh, a Thursday, at the end of Thursday, we will have completed a competition townwide, uh, in, in Town Hall and our other uh, municipal buildings, for a walkathon. And we have, we will be announcing a winner. There are 11 teams, 44 people on these teams. And so far, as of last Friday, we logged over 11 million steps that people have been doing. I'd like to know if we can determine definitively how many of those steps were taken by Eric's dog. No. Uh, Eric, no. Eric is probably one of our he, yes. biggest walkers. He's walking the I track. Have seen hey. him every yes. day. I have seen yep. him. All right. I have too. Well, he's a Stepford. He's walked the most. He's, he's what? He's a Stepford. Yes, he's Definitely a Stepford. Stepford. So if there are any questions. <laughs> any questions for Mr. Manning? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Manning Desi was out walking as well. I saw him. Mr. Desiderio? Uh, Mayor, I have no report, although I do have an item that I have uh, suggested needs uh, some executive discussion afterwards. Great. Okay, we'll do that. I'm, no, I'm sure it's not great, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> uh, Ms. Fritzen? A couple things. Uh, just a reminder, uh, the Senate, uh, General Senate Election Day is Wednesday, October 16th, and uh, polls are open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. at all of our polling locations in town. And uh, people can still uh, have an absentee ballot if the county receives that request a week prior. Uh, we also have a volunteer dinner scheduled. Uh, invitations have gone out to all of our boards and <coughs> committees and our service volunteers, uh, uh, police, uh, <coughs> first aid squad. And that's uh, Tuesday, October 22nd. And uh, that's all I have. Anything for Ms. Fritzen? Okay, we'll go to... Um Elected officials, Ms. Leventhal. Mayor, um, I'd just like to uh, give a big thank you to our volunteers for our wellness um, program. The fair and the week were very successful. Uh, thank you all to my colleagues and anyone else listening that was able to come by. Um, you may have had the opportunity to see the mayor wearing the fatal vision goggles. and walking the yellow line or walking next to the yellow line. <laughs> um, we, uh, this was the second annual. It uh, brought out many more people than last year. We uh, had two and a half times the number of vendors and, and professionals uh, with tables. We had uh, the cooking contest. We also kicked off the walking program that is uh, in partnership like the fair and week were with Overlook Hospital, a, a part of Atlantic Health uh, System. And uh, last night we had the first um, seminar type pres 
presentation. But uh, this is where uh, 40 people were able to sign up um, in Maplewood uh, to be part of the six-week program. Uh, the uh, big deal about it is that there's uh, pedometer, free pedometers, uh, high-end pedometers. Um, this is all through the funding, the grant that we received. And uh, there are sessions with professionals uh, who are volunteering their time. There's uh, um, walks each week. Um, and last night, out of the 40, 33 people showed up. So uh, we, we know that this is well received, too. We're not going to log 11 million steps, however. <laughs> I can guarantee that. <laughs> but uh, we'll have our own successes. Um, also want to mention that Maplewood is being uh, honored by ANJAC, which is uh, the New Jersey Association the Association of New Jersey Environmental Commissions. Um, we will be receiving an honorable mention award on October 19th for our rain garden at the Hilton Library uh, that you may remember went in a couple of years ago, and it's blooming. Um, the Community Coalition on Race is launching a Civic Engagement Institute. Um, this is uh, helping people understand what volunteer is volunteering is about, how to choose how they will volunteer, where they will volunteer, etc. cetera. Um, so I'd like this to go onto our website, if we could, so that people would uh, know uh, the particulars about signing up for the six-week workshop series. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> also, there's an HG TV show um, well, there, there's one called Kitchen Cousins that people might know about, but there's a new one starting Sunday night called Cousins Undercover. And these two gentlemen um, have produced one of their shows here in Maplewood with the Hart family on Hilton uh, Avenue. They are airing it on October 27th at 8 o'clock on HGTV, which in Verizon is number station 165, and in Comcast is station 40. Um, this show um, is a, 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 has a focus on people who give to their communities. And um, the Hearts, especially Mr. Hart, has done this with youth um, in his teaching career. So uh, please tune in, see Maplewood highlighted here. They did a wonderful job, and, the, and all the family and friends that came out to help build uh, was, was just terrific. And I would say that is my report, Mayor. Mr. Ryan. Three quick items, Mayor. I was very pleased to participate in the Art Walk in Maplewood Village. Oh. Uh, bumped into Mr. Brownlee uh, and, and his lovely bride and uh, managed to bring a bunch of relatives from out of town to come and enjoy our, our beautiful downtown. The business district was hopping. Uh, people were enjoying themselves. Money was being spent. It was a great event and a real great job was being done by the Alliance and the local merchants and the artists and the volunteers. Just a really great day, and we were extremely lucky uh, that the weather was so kind to us for the entire event. Just a, a really terrific event. Um, we received um, some mail. I just wanted to uh, make this announcement publicly. Uh, the uh, Christie administration requires every municipality to fill out a best practices survey uh, every year. Um, this is to indicate uh, that the, uh, to prove to the state that the municipality is <coughs> Uh, doing everything that the state wants us to do uh, and in terms of uh, financial management and uh, uh, interacting with other municipalities and as an incentive to uh, do the things that they want us to fill out uh, our achievement on the uh, best practices inventory is tied to how much state aid we get so uh, if we don't do all of the things that we need to do our amount of state aid can be uh, can be reduced and so I'm very pleased to say that uh, our, our finance department and our administrator have uh, filled this uh, best practices inventory in, have checked everything in, and we will 
uh, be getting 100% of the state aid that we're entitled to. Uh, nice job. Thank you very much. And I think the taxpayers thank you too. And uh, lastly, um, we just received an announcement that in collaboration with the Board of Education, um, we have a partnership between the Board of Education and the Rec Department, and we are receiving um, $135,000 in grants for fitness equipment for uh, children's wellness events in our parks, <laughs> and included in that is also um, $45,000 for some uh, children's recreation improvements to our pools. So uh, that's good news. Nice job by... Um, by Mr. Knudsen and his department, and uh, nice to see the collaboration with the school district as well. That's my report, Mayor. Great, thank you. Mr. Brownlee. Uh, two items, Mayor. Um, first was on um, Monday, uh, September 23rd, uh, was the third quarter meeting of the Maplewood Community Action Program. Uh, it's an initiative that I launched earlier this year with uh, my colleague, India Larrier, and um, this gathers together uh, leaders of neighborhood associations from around Maplewood, Maplewood to um, receive information from the police chief and from representatives of some of the different departments that make up Maplewood. I want to thank Chief Semino for giving uh, yet another excellent public safety update and also like to thank uh, Mr. Bob Minnemeyer, uh, our building official, for construction official, for um, giving an excellent update as well. Uh, the residents uh, who attended the meeting. Uh, it was very well received. Um, they also appreciated the opportunity to interact with their colleagues from other uh, neighborhood associations from around town and um, also handed out the Civic Engagement Institute uh, information as well to uh, share that information with them. Uh, one of the things that we emphasize with the attendees of the meeting is that this is a working meeting and that their responsibility is to then go back to the respective neighborhoods and share the information that they've learned in the meeting. So um, we uh, had a successful third quarter meeting, looking forward to the fourth quarter meeting. The date is yet to be set. And um, uh, that's the report on that. The other is that uh, I'll be holding my office hours next Tuesday, um, October 8th, at the Hilton branch of the Maplewood Memorial Library from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. That's my report. Larry. Oh, no report, Mayor. I have two items. First, my office hours are Tuesday the 8th from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. here in Town Hall. And the second item is that I have uh, spoken with Mr. Manning and um, uh, with the ruling of the judge to allow uh, the marriage of same-sex couples we will open town hall at 12.01 a.m. on whatever is the day that uh, finally gets. It's October 21st, but we expect a stay from the governor. So whenever that gets settled, uh, one thing I would like us to uh, pay attention to legally is at what point we're allowed to issue um, <coughs> marriage license. Uh, the ruling was that you could begin officiating we at weddings on October 21st, and there's a, there's a three-day gap between a license and the wedding. So uh, I guess that'll all get sorted out when rules come out, but that's something that we're going to need some guidance on. But whatever the date is, is the official beginning of uh, same-sex marriage. We will open town hall at 12.01, and if anyone wants to get married, we will perform um, anybody's marriage at that time. Anything else? We need a motion to go into closed. So moved. Inspection's got to read the closed. Oh, yeah. Okay. Before whereas, we motion. Whereas Section 80 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, permits exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body's the opinion in such circumstances presently exists, now therefore be resolved by the Township Committee, Township of Maplewood, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, as follows. The public shall be excluded from discussion upon any action upon the herein specified subject matter. The general nature of the subject matter discussed as follows. Litigation. Litigation. To anticipate at this time that the above stated subject matter will be made public, this resolution shall take effect immediately. Mm. Second. Who's called the roll? Mr. Brownlee? Yes. Mrs. Larrier? Yes. Mrs. Leventhal? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you. We'll see you on October 15th.
my microphone is not working.